Hello, this is John W7DBO with the Field Radio Podcast. In this supplemental episode, we completed our build project for the VHF UHF Go Box, and you can reference those four videos on my YouTube channel. So this is a supplemental to those videos. So as I reported in my final wrap-up video, I was able to use this Go Box in two deployments so far. First of all, at the solar eclipse totality in Idaho farmland, as you can see here on the table, set up with our HF gear. And then also supporting a aid station at the Ketchikamosa 100K Ultra Run up in the back country of Utah. As you can see here in this video, I have my ICOM two meter only radio. And this was a secondary radio that I wanted to use because I wanted to be able to monitor three different frequencies, APRS on one, and then two different uh, repeaters or nets. And so I just set the radio on top of the box and quickly found out that it likes to slide. As you can see here, the, the radio constantly would slide to the back. Um, my son put a piece of candy corn there, <laughs> give you some reference. Also, another issue that was created was when the radio would stay up in the front of the box, uh, the dials would hit the top lip of the box. And so this was one thing I found out through field trial that I wanted to be able to resolve because most commonly I will need a second radio, whether it's a second dual band or another radio uh, for, especially when I'm running digital communications, I find that I uh, seem to need another radio on hand. So what I did is uh, I went back to the 3D printer and always looking for a solution using 3D printing. I basically built this sled for any radio uh, to fit on top of the box after opening it up and setting it up, this sled holds the radio in place. It lifts it up to the proper height and uh, it keeps it from sliding around on the box. And so you can see here I have a base uh, that is screwed to uh, side brackets. And so what I can do with this is I can print multiple bases. And then all I need to do is change these brackets based on the spacing of the existing uh, radio supports. And so, as you can see underneath here, I was able to uh, make it a frame. Now in the front of this here, I'll start zooming in here, you can see I put a little lip, a kind of a spot to put where the radio is going to hook to the front of the box without needing any type of uh, long-term screws or brackets. And so you can see here, the back of the radio fits nicely on the box, elevates it, gives it plenty of room. And then here in the front, you can kind of see how that is sitting over the lip, a little side view here. Uh, you can see how this radio is sitting on the, over that lip of the box. And it, it works perfectly. The, just the friction alone and the weight of the radio holds this radio in place. So I am very pleased with this option. Uh, next, I'm going to look at uh, what if I have the need for three radios? And so I may expand this in a future video where I'm going to make some type of tier system where another radio will sit on top of that ICOM radio uh, in a temporary position, uh, possibly uh, with a little bit of height for air venting. So this is a good solution when you need a second radio. It is a high duty cycle radio. And so you want to give this plenty of room to breathe, especially if you are having to use it on high power. This is not a radio that you want to contain inside a box or a rack that is going to have limited airflow. So this is the perfect solution for this kind of radio uh, to be able to be out in the open and air. And then all I do is take this radio before breaking down. I'm just able to take this radio, leave it on the sled, set it into a, another portable storage box uh, for transportation. I hope you've enjoyed this supplemental video. Like I said, um, as I go through uh, different deployments with this box, I will be providing additional information and field reports. Upcoming, I will be supporting this next week. This is being recorded in the first part of September 2017. I'll be supporting the Lotoja Logan 2 Jackson bicycle ride. And this will be actually using this go box in a vehicle. Uh, so I'm going to be producing a video after the event showing how I can take this go box and still implement it in a vehicle deployment. So look forward to that and uh, many other projects as I continue with the Field Radio podcast. 
If you're new to the Field Radio podcast and you came across this on YouTube, you can find information about our bi-weekly podcast on the Ham Radio 360 network, where we also have the Ham Radio 360 show and the Workbench show, three excellent resources for your ham radio hobby. You can find that at fieldradiopodcast.org or hamradio360.com. Thank you for watching. This is John with the Field Radio Podcast, 73.